Hey guys, Carissa here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Inky Fairy Designs. Today I'm up on the Ranger Ink blog with a special tutorial using their new gel press product. I'm going to show you how to create this mixed media art envelope that we can put in the mail using the gel press. So I'm using a 5x7 envelope today. This is a watercolor envelope, so it's going to handle lots of layers well. You could also create your own envelope using various punch tools, but I thought this would be easier. Plus, bonus points because it fits the 5.5 by 11 inch gel press plate perfectly. This is one of the plates that comes in the variety pack that has this size, a smaller size, and a circle one. So the next thing you're going to need are some paints. I pulled out some Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body Acrylic Paints today. You could also use Dilutions paints. They work great with a gel press. And you're going to need to have the gel press accessories like the brayer, these paint combs, and the marking tools that I'll show you here. And you can see that I've been loving this technique. My stuff is already pretty much well loved and dirty. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I hope I'm not the only one that has stencils like this, but um, it just means that I'm using them. So I pulled out some stencils to have, and I'm also going to pull out some stamps um, to create texture in my paint. And um, to keep the tutorial in a reasonable time frame, I did speed it up four times what it actually took me. But the technique is really quick. I only had about 35 to 45 minutes of footage from start to finish. And you just want to... Um, just have fun with it. So we're going to get started. The first step that I want to show you is laying two colors on your paint of your paint onto your gel plate. I'm using, um, I guess I'm using Elephant and Blushing for my first layer. And then I'm going to put in some marks using that um, comb. And uh, you get three in the pack. So this is just one of them. It gives you kind of like these little squares. Um, and you know it's it's pretty cool you just make some marks and then one of the things that you want to keep in mind with this technique is to let your dry, your layers dry a little bit in between um, I am using the smaller gel plates as a paint palette so I can pick up my color there on my brayer and then pull it over to my gel plate and you can see I laid down a, tenth, a stencil and added some more texture there um, just randomly, I don't, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really thinking about it too much. I just want to lay down um, some texture and some colors. And so the next thing I wanted to do was add some magenta just to frame out my gel plate. And so I didn't put it all over the gel plate, just around the edges. And now I'm coming in with some stamps um, from the assorted border set and pressing it into my plate just to create some more texture. So just don't think about it. Like I said, the last thing that we want to do is add a layer of um, a lighter color or maybe a contrasting color. And you want to keep this layer thin, but you want to cover your entire plate at this point. Now, this is where the magic happens. I'm going to lay down my envelope onto the plate and I'm going to use some scratch paper and just kind of rub it really in and then pull it up and all those layers come up and it's just gorgeous. I absolutely love <laughs> this part. It's my favorite part. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but you can see when I pull it to the other side or put my envelope on the other side, it doesn't cover entirely because it's not that long. But um, I can just flip it and get another pull from my plate. And that's the great thing about this technique is that you can usually get two or three pulls from one layer or one session on your gel plate and then don't let that paint go to waste on um, the palette that the smaller one I laid a stencil down on top of that and pressed my envelope in various areas just to pick up the rest of that color and add more texture and color to my envelope so the next thing I wanted to do I wanted to add some more of this blushing color because it kind of got lost in that first because um, it was one of the first layers I laid down on my gel plate and it didn't come up so much and I really love this color especially with the turquoise and I wanted to add more of it so um, one of my favorite techniques on the gel press is laying my stencil down and put using my brayer to add the color on top and then removing the stencil so that it just leaves that onto the gel plate and then I can press my envelope in various areas and get that 
color on there again. So I'm doing the same technique. This is what I was talking about. I lay the stencil on top of my gel plate. Then I add the paint with my brayer and in here I'm using some white. I like to kind of end with white just to brighten it up in case it got a little busy. And um, this is a great way to break up anything that was maybe a little bit too much or you know got a little muddy. You can always add some white layers on it and that will break it right up and lighten it, brighten it. Um, and then also when I'm working on the envelopes, I like to kind of keep that middle area cleaner. Um, I still have pretty color there, but that's where I'm going to put the mailing address. So I tend to do all of my like uh, stenciling and stamping and all that as I continue to decorate the envelope um, after I'm done with the gel press on the edges, not in that middle area. So I'm coming in with these stamps, um, text and scribbles, and I'm using the night ink because I love text on my art and um, just kind of randomly placing it on my envelope. Oh, be sure to do both sides because you are creating um, some art on both sides of the envelope. Next, I came in with circle patterns um, using the Hickory Smoke Archival Ink, and I wanted this to tie in with the circle faces um, from the Oops Oh Well set that I'm going to use as my focal image on the front. So I stamped this in the lighter ink, the Hickory Smoke Ink, and then I'm just using my heat tool to make sure that those are drying. And then I wanted to brighten it up a little bit and make some more marks on my page or my envelope. And so I'm using those same tools and um, just bringing in some white paint onto the, my page. I actually also bring in the Dina Wakely media marking tools. Um, I just was playing around seeing if they were similar. I found that the ones for the gel plate are softer and I believe that's so you don't um, hurt your gel plate. And then this one, this is the Dina Wakely marking tools. It's a little bit firmer, so they, but they're both great. I just think the gel plate one is definitely formulated for your gel plate so it doesn't damage it. Um, so now I'm coming in with the face from that Oops Oh Well set and I'm using um, black soot paint to do that and I think that's about it. Um, my girls asked me why I like gel printing so much. It's kind of the first time that I'm really really enjoying it and I don't know I told them that I think it's just the element of surprise to me because they said that I can do the same thing laying down paint. I mean it looks like backgrounds that I make anyway just laying down paint on paper. But honestly, I think it's the element of surprise. Um, I love laying down all the fun layers and colors and texture and then putting my paper on top and pulling it up to see what kind of beautiful magic happens underneath. It's just so much fun. And maybe we need more of that in our lives. Just random beauty. Enjoying the process. Not thinking about it. Not worrying about the income. And I think that's what the gel press tool is teaching me. So you can see I did a little bit of... Um, Journal, or not journaling, but just a little bit of doodling um, with the food uh, pen in black. And then it just wasn't quite done to me, and I felt like it needed something more. So I pulled out some distress crayons in similar colors that I have on my background, and I just added color to this face and uh, made her pop a little bit more. So I gave her some rosy cheeks because you guys know I love to do that. And I'm not doing it to the one on the back, just the one on the front to really... Mm, bring that one out and then I also pull out um, a purple um, lilac color and because I found that there was some purple even though I didn't use purple paint I got some purple onto my background and I just went around all of those circles with that distress crayon and I'm blending it out just with my fingers I'm not doing anything fancy <laughs> my finger is probably my favorite tool in mixed media so that's my envelope Oh my gosh, I just love this and I can't wait to mail it to my friend. I think it just brings a little bit of happiness. I mean, we all get like so much, I don't know, junk mail and bills and this is just going to make somebody happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Try to make some mixed media art envelopes yourself to put out there. Um, make some something pretty to put in the mail. 
Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the gel press. If you've guys used it before, um, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I had a blast working with this new tool and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it by giving me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos like it. Every Monday I share a new mixed media video here. Um, so you can check that out. And you can pretty much find me everywhere on social media as Inky Fairy Designs. And be sure to check out my new Facebook group in the description box below. Um, I That's it for me. I will be back here on Wednesday for another Watercolor Wednesday video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.